Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kandan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjalaya Mall Mahalingam Engineering College, Kovil Vanni. I am happy to meet you in the video lecture on the subject Design of Transmission System. And this is lecture number 10.1. We are going to discuss about the clutch design. So, the topic will be covered Design of plate clutches, axle clutches, cone clutches internal expanding rim clutch, electromagnetic clutches. So, in the earlier lecture, we discussed the design of belt drive, chain drive, rope drive, gear and the gear box. So, in this lecture, we will be discussing about the design of clutches. And the learning outcome to the students, at the end of the lecture, the stu students will be able to explain the working of single plate clutch, multi plate clutch, cone clutch and centrifugal clutch and calculate the tra torque transmitted by a single plate clutch, multi plate clutch, cone clutch and the centrifugal clutch. Clutch is a mechanical device which is used to connect or disconnect the source of power from the remaining part of the power transmission system at the will of the operator. Almost every everybody uh, working with uh, operating the two wheeler or four wheeler so, we know the function of the clutch, it is used to for connect or disconnect the wheel of the automobile with the engine. So, the in between, if you have a geared vehicle in between the gear box and the engine, so there is a clutch to engage, disengage or engage the, the transmission system with the engine, so that the power will be transmitted to the wheel. And uh, what is the operation of the clutch? So, initially the driving member is rotating and the driven member is at rest. Finally, when you engage, uh, when you disengage the clutch, the driving member that is the engine is rotating and the driven member that is the wheel it is at rest. Final condition, when you engage the clutch, both the member rotate at the same speed and have no relative motion. So, this is the basic operation of the clutch. The another device will compare with the brake. So, the operation of the brake initial condition one member such as the brake drum is rotating and the braking member such as the brake shoe is at rest. So, the brake shoe is at rest and the brake drum is rotating. When you engage the brake, when you apply the brake, the final condition both the member are at rest and have no relative motion. So, in the clutch design in the clutch when you engage the clutch both the member will be rotating and without any relative motion whereas in the case of brake when you apply the brake both the member driving and the driven member will come to the rest and there is no relative motion and there are different types of clutches we classify uh, the types of clutches the first clutch is positive contact clutch they can transmit large torque without any slip the square jaw clutches, spiral clutches and the toothed clutches are the example of, uh, example for the positive contact clutch. There is no slip in the case of positive contact clutch. The next one is friction clutches. That is what we are going to focus in this lecture. So, we are going to discuss uh, more on the single plate clutch, multi plate clutch, cone clutch and the uh, clutch with the friction. The power transmission is achieved by means of friction between the contacting surfaces. So, the there are two contacting surfaces. So, the friction disc will have the contacting surfaces. So, through the contact surface there will be friction. Using the friction the clutch will be power will be transmitted. So, there are different types of uh, friction clutches. Single plate clutch, multi plate clutch, cone clutch are the friction clutches. Then another type of clutch is electromagnetic clutch. The power transmission is by means of magnetic field. The advantage of electromagnetic clutch clutches are rapid time, rapid response time, immediately it will respond, ease of control and smooth start and stops. These are all the advantages and types of the electromagnetic clutch, magnetic particle clutch, magnetic hysteresis clutch and the eddy current clutch. So, these are all the different types of electromagnetic clutches. And finally, we have fluid clutch and the fluid coupling. So, the power transmission is achieved by means of hydraulic pressure. So, fluid coupling 
uh, hydraulic dynamometer in a, in a thermal engineering laboratory you would have, you have conducted some experiment with the hydraulic uh, dynamometer so that is one example of the hydraulic or fluid flux and the first example the positive displacement flux jaw flux a look at the diagram we have a jaw and the socket when you shift the lever when you shift the lever the jaw will engage the engage in the socket and both will be rotating without any slip so there is a provision for the jaw in the socket so the socket and the jaw will engage but the problem with the jaw clutch is so the clutch will be engaged when the both the members are in rest so when it when it is uh, rotating when the one member driving member is rotating we cannot disengage or engage the clutch because it will leads to shock the advantages of jaw clutch they do not slip and the engagement is positive so that is why it is called as they are called as positive clutch positive contact clutch no heat is generated during engagement or disengagement it is perfectly fitted the jaw is perfectly fitted into the socket so there is no relative motion so there is no possibility of any heat generation and disadvantages jaw clutches can be engaged only when both shafts are stationary or rotate while uh, while very small speed difference so the speed difference should be very very small right if it is stationary it is comfortable to engage or disengage the clutch they cannot they cannot be engaged at a high speed because of engagement of jaw and socket result in shock so that is advert disadvantages of the jaw clutch and a single plate friction clutch so the this is the single diagram of the single plate cl friction clutch we have driving shaft where this member is permanent and we have a friction lining and this is the driven shaft which can be shifted and moved axially so against the actuating uh, spring so when you uh, against the spring force so the spring will have the contact it, it will make the the driven the this plate will be in contact with the uh, friction lining when you want to disengage you have to press the lever uh, backward so that against the spring pressure this will be disengaged this is another diagram of the single plate clutch so the axial this this will give the, by pressing the lever the driven, driven shaft can be shifted so that the engage so the, we have a spring here on both sides so against the spring force we have to move the uh, friction lining backwards and the, the the plate contact the driving member driven member backwards advantages the engagement is smooth slip occurs only during engaging engaging operation and there is no slip during the operation so during eng engaging only there will be slip because of that there will be some heat generation and the points to be considered in the design of friction clutches selection of proper type of clutch that is suitable for given application we have to select uh, either whether there are uh, two different types wet clutch and the dry clutch we have to select properly selection of suitable material friction material at the contacting surfaces there are some desirable properties of the friction material that we will discuss later so we have to select proper material designing the clutch for sufficient torque capacity engagement and disengagement disengagement should be without shock or the jerk the provision for holding the contacting surfaces together by the clutch itself and without any external assistance low weight for rotation parts to produce, to reduce the inertia forces particularly in high speed application so when you have more weight the inertia force will be very high provision for taking or compensating wear of the rubbing surfaces the provision for carrying away the heat generated in the rubbing surface there should be some cooling mechanism for the clutches and uh, first we take the single plate clutch so this is the cross section of the single plate clutch there are terminologies are d capital d outer diameter of the friction disc in millimeter small d inner diameter of the friction disc in millimeter p is the intensity of pressure at radius r in newtons per millimeter square p total p is the total pressure capital p is the total pressure in newton so the total pressure is ap applying here and the mt is the torque transmitted by the clutch in newton meter so we'll calculate so considering the elemental ring of radius r at a thickness of dr so we we take a, a elemental ring of uh, thickness dr and radius r for the ring the elemental area is 2 pi r into dr the elemental axial force is 
P intensity of pressure into 2 pi r into area. A 2 pi r into dr. That is P is intensity of pressure into area that gives the axial force. Elemental frictional force equal to mu P into 2 pi r into dr. So, elemental frictional force equal to 2 P, uh, sorry, mu P into 2 pi r into dr. Multiplying the elemental axial force with the coefficient of friction mu. And uh, elemental frictional torque that is equal to mu p into 2 pi r dr into r. So, the torque equal to the frictional force into radius at which it is acting. So, calculating rearranging 2 pi mu into p r square dr that is the elemental frictional torque. Then the total operating force that is p we have to integrate this equation 2 pi p r dr. So, the total transmit torque transmitted m t will be integrating mu. So, the substituting for the terms it is 2 pi mu into integrating r to r uh, p r square into dr that is the torque, torque transmitted by the flux. Now, we calculate the parameter. There are two theories. One is uniform pressure theory. So, according to uniform pressure theory total operating force p equal to pi by 4 p into capital D square minus small d square. So, where p is the intensity of pressure and the torque transmitted by the clutch m t equal to pi by 12 mu p into d cube minus d cube. So, capital D cube minus small d cube and uh, this is also equal to mu p capital P total pressure d cube minus small d cube divided by 3 capital D square minus small d square. So, rearranging the terms this equal to mu into total pressure into R of R of is the reference diameter R of equal to reference radius R of equal to d cube minus small d cube divided by 3 into d square minus small d square. So, the final equation, this equation is important to calculate the, the torque transmitted by the clutch using the uniform pressure theory in a single plate flux. Then uniform wear theory. So, the wear is proportional to friction force into rubbing velocity. So, the friction force is mu p and rubbing velocity is 2 pi r into n. So, which is also equal to promote it is by it is proportional to p into r because other values are constant mu is constant 2 pi n everything is constant the only parameter variable is intensity of pressure and radius of the uh, radius of the uh, elemental ring then for uniform wear theory p r equal to constant so the permissible intensity of pressure equal to p a then the total operating pressure p equal to pi by 2 p a d into capital d minus small d and the torque transmitted equal to m t into pi by 8 mu p a d into d square capital d square minus small d square and substituting capital p from the previous equation and this m t will be equal to mu p mu into capital p by 4 into capital d plus small d which is equal to mu capital p into r f so r f is the reference radius capital d plus small d divided by 2 so the torque transmitted, this final equation is also important for calculating the uh, torque transmitted by the clutch using uniform wear theory. So, there are two theories for uh, designing the single plate clutch. So, whether this is uniform pressure theory and uniform wear, uh, wear theory and we will compare these two. Uniform pressure theory is applicable only when the friction lining is new uh, because when you apply the, when you, when you friction, if I, when the uh, clutch is working for a longer time then the uniform pressure theory is not applicable uniform wear theory is applicable when the friction line is get worn out so friction radius for new clutches slightly greater than that of worn out clutches the torque transmitting capacity of new clutches is slightly more than the worn out clutches a major portion of the life of friction lining comes under the uniform wear criterion so it is more logical and safer to use the uniform wear theory in the design of clutches because when you design the clutch with uniform wear theory, so it is applicable for throughout the life of the clutches. Then torque transmitting capacity of the clutch can be increased by use of friction material with a higher coefficient of friction. Mu value should be higher. Increase of plate pressure, total pressure applied and increase the mean radius of the friction this Rm equal to capital R plus small r divided by 2 and the service factor equal to design torque I mean uh, torque transmitted for the design value equal to K s into torque transmitted rated value. So, K s is the service factor. Then multiplate clutch. So, look at the configuration. We have multiple uh, disc, uh, uh, disc B and disc A. There are multiple clutches. 
so it is very much similar to the single plate sledge excepting the number of contact surfaces between the driving and the driven member and uh, here in the multi plate uh, disc the calculation the required equation for calculating our parameter using uniform pressure theory so mt equal to mu p z into capital d cube minus small d cube divided by 3 into capital d square minus small d square where z is the uh, only variable comparing with the previous equation similarly uniform wear theory mt equal to mu into capital p the applied pressure pressure force into z divided by 4 into capital d by capital d plus small d where z is the number of pair of contacting surfaces and p is the total pressure d is the inner diameter of the friction disc capital d is the outer diameter of the friction disc and mu is the coefficient of friction then the number of disc how to calculate the number of disc where, where you have we have four pair of contacting surfaces there is there are four pair of contacting surfaces the number of disc number of pair of contacting surfaces plus 1 so this is equal to z plus 1 so z z1 is the number of disc and the driving shaft z2 is the number of disc in the driven shaft the number of pair of contacting surfaces z equal to z1 plus z2 minus 1 so you calculate z here so contact based on the information given we can get the z1 z2 value and we can calculate the z value so z is the number of pair of contacting surfaces that is what required for calculating the frictional torque of the uh, frictional torque transmitted by the multi plate clutch then difference between single plate and the multi plate clutch the number of pair of contacting surfaces in the single plate clutch is one or at the most two there are more number of contacting surfaces in the case of multi plate clutch for a given torque capacity the size of the multi plate clutch is smaller because the power transmission depending on the frictional surface when you have more contacting surfaces the total frictional area is increased in the case of multi plate clutch so the overall size of the multi plate clutch is smaller than that of a single plate clutch resulting in compact construction so the size of the multi plate clutch is very small comparing with the uh, single plate clutch for the same amount of power transmission more heat is generated in the case of multi plate clutch due to the increased number of contacting surfaces so so the multi plate clutch are wet clutches and single plate clutch are the dry clutches the coefficient of friction in the wet clutch is less and in the dry clutch is high so the coefficient of friction, so that is that is there is another difference so in the power transmitted by a single dry plate clutch is more comparing with the wet plate clutch because of the higher value of mu single plate clutch are used where large radial space is available for the same power transmission when you have large radial surface we can use the single plate clutch and multi plate clutch are used where compact construction is desirable for example scooters and the motorcycles so in the scooter and the motorcycle we are using the multi plate clutches and the difference between dry and the wet clutches the coefficient of friction in the dry clutch is 0.3 or more while it is point less or point uh, 0.1 or less in the case of wet clutches so uh, when you have when you use when mu value is higher uh, the coefficient of friction is higher the power transmission capacity of the clutch is also higher torque capacity of the dry clutch is more than the wet clutch it is because of the uh, the mu value for the same size the dry clutch will transmit more power than the wet clutch heat dissipation is difficult in the case of dry clutch whereas in the wet clutch the lubricating oil carries away the frictional heat so we have lubricating oil uh, filled the, the actually the, uh, the friction material it is completely soaked in the lubricating oil that will take care of the heat, heat produced during the rubbing action the rate of wear is far less in the wet clutches compared to the dry clutches the engagement of wet clutch is smoother than the in the case of dry clutches so these are all the uh, comparison between dry and the wet clutches and it is up to the designer to select depending on the application space available and the kind of uh, friction material available you can select a particular type of clutch but it is desirable to use the wet clutch for a longer duration of operation desirable properties of friction material so in the friction in the friction clutches the friction material plays very important role uh, for the power transmission so the coefficient of friction and uh, the type of material it is very important we should have high coefficient of friction the coefficient of friction should remain constant over the entire range of temperature during the operation so the constant the mu should be higher at the same time it should be constant it should have good 
thermal conductivity for dissipation of heat energy so it should be, it should not retain the heat it should be it should the material should immediately dissipate the heat energy it should not get affected by the moisture or dust particle in the atmosphere it should have high resistance to the wear it should have good resilience to provide good distribution of the pressure uh, at the contacting surfaces so these are all the some desirable properties and material used woven asbestos and cast iron molded asbestos and the cast iron bronze based sintered material with the cast iron and bronze based bronze based sintered metal with the steel so these are all the material combination used for the friction material the next tire topic is cone flex so look at the cone flex here we have male cone and the male and female part of the cone so the driving shaft and the driving member is female piece and the driven member is the cone which is the male male portion of the uh, clutch so again it is very much similar we have to shift the using the against the uh, spring force we have to shift the uh, cone backward to disengage the clutch and we have the friction lining material uh, on the contact surface and here we have the engaging spring and this is the driven shaft which is moving in a slotted shaft and the alpha is the angle of the cone and uh, using the uniform pressure theory the various parameters required for uh, calculating cone clutch the pressure equal to pi by 4 p intensity of pressure into d square minus ca capital d square minus small d square so capital d square capital d is the outer diameter capital d small d is the inner diameter of the cone and the torque transmitted equal to pi by 12 mu p by sin alpha into d cube minus d cube and this is equal to mu here it is intensity of pressure here it is total pressure so mu capital p divided by 3 sin alpha into d cube minus small d cube divided by d square minus a small d square and using the uniform wear theory uniform wear theory capital p the in the pressure uh, uh, mean uh, pressure force equal to pi by 2 into the intensity of pressure pa into d into capital d minus small d and the mt equal to pi by 8 mu into pa into d into uh, so capital d square minus small d square by sin alpha and the torque transmitted in terms of total pressure mt equal to mu into capital p divided by 4 sin alpha into capital d plus small d so you remember the final equation for calculating the torque transmitted by the cone flex and the here the phase width of the friction lining b equal to uh, capital d minus small d divided by 2 sin alpha where p is the total pressure d is the inner diameter of the friction disk capital d is the diam outer diameter of the friction disk and mu is the coefficient of friction and small p pa is the intensity of pressure in newton per millimeter square and centrifugal clutch so this is another type of uh, clutch so look at the uh, diagram so we have over uh, here we have four members and we, all the members are actuated by the uh, I mean spring and uh, here again we have the engaging and uh, the always the uh, because of the spring force the the i mean this member the friction lining material will be always in contact the screw will be all, always in contact with the uh, the outer ring which is rotating so here it is, it is the driven member and it is the driving member and because of the spring force this will be in contact against the spring force we have to apply the force and uh, bring back the shoes so that the clutch will be disengaged this is design of uh, centrifugal clutch so we take the uh, diagram for calculating various forces so look at the here this is the radius the r is the radius f is the force acting on the surface we have pc and ps and uh, g is g is the point of application of the force the centrifugal force acting on each shoe at the running speed so pc is the centrifugal force which is pc equal to m into omega square into r where m is the mass omega is the uh, angular speed in radians per second and the r is the radius and the inward force of each shoe exerted by the spring is given by ps equal to 9 by 16 into m omega square into r again m is the mass omega omega is the radius i mean uh, angular speed or angular velocity and where m is the mass of each shoe r is the uh, the distance of center of gravity of the shoe from the center of spider r is the capital r is the inside radius of the pulley rim and n is the running speed of the pulley in rpm and omega is the angular running speed of the pulley which is 2 pi n divided by 60 radians per second now the net outward radial force 
the centrifugal force which uh, with which the shoe presses the presses against the rim at the running speed that is equal to pc minus ps which is m into omega square r minus 9 by 16 m omega square r equal to 7 by 16 m omega square into r this is the net outward radial force or the centrifugal force then frictional force acting tangentially on the surface f equal to mu into pc minus ps so the frictional torque acting on each shoe which is equal to fr in f into r so mu into pc minus ps into r where r is the inside radius of the pulley rim and mu is the coefficient of friction of the uh, between the shoe and the rim and the frictional torque transmitted t equal to mu into pc minus ps into r into n so when you have n number of shoes so it is n into f into r so f is the frictional torque and r is the radius and n is the number of shoes and the size of the shoe we have to calculate length of the shoe and the face the width of the shoe and the intensity of pressure so pc minus ps equal to lb into the intensity of pressure exerted by the shoe so l is the length of the shoe and b is the width of the shoe in millimeter so we stop here so these are all the books i publish in mechanical engineering subject and i upload the video lectures of all the subject in the youtube channel Uh, use the video lectures subscribe the channel use the video lectures for your better preparation for the examination so thank you for watching please post your comments on the comments box you can contact me uh, through my mail id or whatsapp number for any clarification on the subject we'll meet again in another next video on uh, problems on the clutch design until then bye bye